this is Tim Odekeytrak from Two Consulting, and today I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, value stream mapping, uh, how uh, you can use that in your organization to be able to visualize how you deliver uh, the products or services that you that you promise your customers, how to visualize uh, opportunities for improvement within your value stream uh, and your value delivery system. Uh, both at a system level and also at a, at a point or a process level and tying that into uh, your long-term strategy and creating uh, a future uh, state that you'd like to achieve, um, whether it be for growth or whether it be for, for greater productivity uh, or customer satisfaction or uh, improved quality. So uh, what I'm going to work with here today is a is a tool that we use it's a, a software tool called lean pilot uh, it's a fantastic uh, user-friendly uh, very simple tool to use uh, to be able to uh, engage a team around uh, their findings uh, following observation in the value stream and being able to discuss and very easily map out what uh, opportunities they've identified to take forward and, and develop solutions or problem um, solving uh, actions around. So what I'm going to quickly show you here today is, is just a bit about uh, that, the software, um, and just this example that, that we've created here uh, just to explain a little bit about um, what a value stream is and, and uh, how you can use it. So this is a, a manufacturing example. However, um, value stream map, maps can be uh, invaluable when it comes to uh, mapping the patient flow, for example, in a in a healthcare provider or a hospital, um, we've used this in financial services uh, organizations to to look at the uh, loan application and approval process, um, or even in an administrative call center to be able to track um, the interaction of a of an inbound call. Uh, through the organization. So there's different types of value stream maps. Um, this is a traditional uh, layout, but there are value stream maps that are um, uh, separated by uh, functions in the business. So uh, they'd be referred to as swim lane value stream maps. So for example, sales, uh, administrative um, functions, then, uh, then let's say retail operations, that might be an example. But um, very versatile, um, but let's walk through this one today and, and I'll uh, explain a few of the, the benefits of, of um, engaging your team around, around this process to, to find improvements. So the first, first and foremost, um, we can see that there's a lot of um, icons and, and uh, sets of icons here. So we have different um, uh, options here when it comes to uh, establishments or process types or um, for example uh, uh, logistics um, indicators here as well as uh, inventory indicators also with uh, information flow so value streams or value stream maps are really to, to track uh, the movement of, of information and also what it is that you're actually transforming to to um, to deliver what it is you promised to your customer that product or service so that could be raw material. It could be, like I mentioned before, the patient um, receiving treatment throughout uh, a healthcare process. But um, this is a fantastic tool that's that's fairly comprehensive with what um, you're able to do with it and and to be able to visualize. So I'm just going to drop that tool toolbar down so we can see a bit more here, and you can see that that's up at the top for when I need it. Um, first and foremost, what we want to understand is. Uh, the needs of our customers. So in this case, uh, we're selling some simple products to them. It's a, it's a metal part uh, and they need 24 of those per day. And we realized that um, we have one shift and to be able to deliver that, that means that we have to, to produce one of these metal parts every 20 minutes. So we've worked with our customer and we, we actually uh, have, have had their help by getting a seasonal forecasts or even monthly forecasts. And that's helped us to plan our resources and to design our our um, our processes around delivering uh, to their needs. So we've also worked out a, a solution with them for daily orders. So we're receiving those electronically at this point, and that's going into a planning process in our business. So that that planning process over here 
is actually helping us uh, provide a, a logistics or a shipping plan. Uh, it's also allowing us to devise a, uh, a balanced or level production system. And um, what I mean by that is uh, having a mix of different parts or procedures or um, different elements that are going to go through the same process, um, but actually leveling that off in a way that uh, we're actually delivering a completed item or uh, a service in, in full um, more often at the end. So for example, um, in our, our business, we have a U, an O, and a G part. Uh, we're not going to wait to build all the U's um, and then the O's and then the G's, and the customer really wants one of each at the end. What we're going to do is change over from time to time um, to optimize the completed goods so that we're actually delivering the customers when they want as opposed to making them wait. So same thing in, in, um, in healthcare, for example, um, batching a certain procedure type uh, for the same theater when we, we perform different procedures in there as well um, would really cause, uh, let's say, a, a, a bit of a, a flow on effect as well as a bottleneck for um, preparation uh, materials, for example. We might be using all different types of consumables or medications for one, and we need a, an entire batch of that um, as opposed to, as opposed to um, balancing that off and getting a smoother flow. So that's, that's what we can do, the information. And of course, we're indicating to our suppliers uh, here, in this case, electronically, that we need some of the raw materials, the metal plates, they provide us those metal plates via road freight and we've got some stock there at the beginning of our, our process. So now that we understand the, the information flow and, and a bit about what we do with our suppliers and all stemming from the customer's needs, uh, we have a process here and, and we have four steps in our, in our process to be able to do what it is we need to do to, to deliver for the customer. There's a, a cutting and sawing process there, a milling process, a drilling a test and assembly process and then finally we're we're um, loading our our vehicle to be able to deliver to the customer so um, under each one of those those steps um, we, we have the the amount of process owners or operators uh, at that step uh, we have a cycle time so for example that O uh, U O and G parts over here we have three different uh, cycle time. So we've had to take a weighted average to be able to, to visualize this properly. Um, every time we change between one of those different parts or between two of those different parts, uh, there's a changeover time of 20 minutes. So we have to take that into consideration, uh, like I said before, uh, making sure that we get the right mix to be able to, to deliver uh, to, the, to the demand times that we have up here from our customer. So that takes a bit of calculation, but um, nothing nothing we're going to go into too much detail today on. Uh, this is a very good process in terms of quality. There's 100% yield, um, just for the sake of an example. And this process runs for 540 minutes a day. So as materials here get replenished, um, what we have from the milling process is that when they consume any of the work in process from this first step, we've actually controlled that through a, um, a Kanban. So for those who don't know, a Kanban is a, it can be a physical um, limit on the work in process in between two, two steps, and also um, using a signal uh, to tell the, the previous process, hey, I've consumed what you've, what you've provided me, um, or, or back to an amount where that's meant to trigger the replenishment of those those work and process materials again. So it can be a visual indicator, can be a card, can be a uh, a networked message on a on a system. It can be all different types of things. But that's the concept there. So we're we're limiting the amount of of um, uh, batching and work and process in between these two steps. So this milling process, they mill all three parts as a set. There's one operator. There's 18 minute cycle time. The changeover time is under five minutes. And we're changing over our parts um, by shift, so that's that's just an indicator um, to when we change from from one set to another. So uh, there's a first in, first out um, 
uh, transfer between these two steps. So that means that uh, we have a, a, a single piece flow um, and we're going to consume uh, the first one out of the milling process into the drilling test and assembly process. So uh, there we have two process owners, a 17 minute cycle time, a two minute change over time which was reduced. Um, and it's available 100% of the time, there's no planned downtime there and we have 420 minutes a day that that's available. But what we noticed um, in the observation, uh, and I'm going to zoom in here, is, and we've embedded a photo, is uh, a very uh, disorganized uh, workplace here. So there, there, there's no workplace organization to speak of when it comes to the different drill bits uh, that are required for, for, this, uh, for this process. So what we've identified here is, is a revisit of the 5S practices. And what we'll do is we'll implement um, a visual management or a workplace organization system to have the right bits uh, available in the right sequence uh, by frequency and by part type. So the operators can find what they need when they need it, uh, as opposed to searching through a drawer. So that's just a little example um, that you might find when doing a value stream map. Uh, so this drilling test and assembly process um, is also a first in first out to the shipping or dispatch area and then it returns uh, our finished goods to the customer um, in, in this pace here. So you would have noticed uh, the, um, the timeline uh, below. So starting from the amount of raw material that we have we have two days worth of raw material, and then we're actually transforming uh, the raw material. So we have value added time here in 19 minutes. We have 0.7 days um, of work and process in between these two steps. We have 18 minutes of value added time and transformation and milling. We have six hours of, of work and process in between uh, milling and drilling test assembly, 17 minutes of actual transformation uh, there. Uh, presuming that's all value added time, uh, whether or not testing uh, can be determined as value added time is a, is a debate. And um, finally, 34 minutes between uh, that last step and uh, the logistics process. So we have a, a total lead time, including our raw material stock um, from our supplier of 3.4 days, but we're only uh, really doing anything that the customer would pay for uh, for 54 minutes um, throughout that time. So what you can see here is there's a vast uh, room for improvement in terms of uh, what we'd be able to flow through the organization if we eliminated some of the waiting in between the steps. So um, that could be the patient waiting, that could be uh, a loan waiting in terms of uh, getting a loan officer to review risks um, of, a, of a new homeown, a new homeowner loan, uh, or in this case, it could be raw materials um, or work in process in between steps. So, uh, so this is uh, just an example uh, of of how you can look at uh, your business uh, for a particular product group or or. Uh, product family and its process and identify whether or not you're meeting your customers needs. Uh, you can identify whether or not you have bottlenecks, which we did over here. So our first step, our, our cutting and sawing area uh, is the bottleneck in this process. It's the longest. So it takes 19 minutes versus 18 and 17. And what we might do is, is look at uh, a bit closer what the operations and tasks are in this area and look at balancing that out a, out a bit better or actually distributing uh, some of the tasks if, if able uh, to to the next step um, if it's possible because a lot of a lot of the steps will probably be, have to be in sequence so um so the, the goal being uh increasing uh your throughput uh in, and your output your productivity and also rationalizing uh what you can do um within the business to be able to uh, have capacity for growth or uh, becoming more productive. So uh, I hope this has been a bene uh, benefit to you. I'd like you, um, if you're interested, to follow the links below to learn a bit more about uh, Lean Pilot and uh, value stream mapping. 
and uh, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Thanks again, this is Tim Odekiczek from 2Consulting.